Hello, I'm Anita and this is Care Experts, brought to you by Care Credit. With the Care Credit credit card, you can get the dental work you want or need now. Care Credit is accepted at hundreds of thousands of locations nationwide for preventative, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry. Today we're in Los Angeles, California with Dr. Kellen Mori. Born in Brazil, Dr. Mori is a member of the American Dental Association and has over 30 years of experience. She practices in the heart of Beverly Hills and focuses on compassionate dental care. Today we'll be discussing gum disease. Dr. Mori, can you tell me what exactly is gum disease? Gum disease is an infection of the tissue around your, around your tooth. It's mm -hmm. a bacteria infection, also known as periodontal disease. Okay. So when you have a lot of bacteria that surrounds your tooth, it becomes inflamed. So that can be caused by, you know, a lot of things, but mostly when you don't brush or floss your teeth well. Are there different types of gum disease or is it really just one? No, there are many types. Okay. Uh, the most common is gingivitis. Okay. It's the first stage when your gum starts to get, you know, a little red and puffiness. And, you know, when you floss your teeth, you can see some blood. Or when you brush your teeth, you see some blood. So that's the first sign of a gingivitis. Yeah, my next question was going to be, how would one know that they have gum disease? So these are some of the things that you should These are some for. signs. Most people don't even know they have gum disease okay. or gingivitis. You know, the dentist will tell them. But the sign could be also bad breath, you know? Okay. Maybe your partner is saying, hmm, I smell something strange here. <laughs> so that could be a sign of gingivitis. Is it painful? Would you be experiencing any kind of, um, like, discomfort in your mouth? No, it's not painful. Gingivitis, okay. you know, doesn't cause any pain. So that's why most people have it and they don't know. So, so gingivitis is mostly caused just because you're not taking care of your gums and your teeth correctly. Yes, it's a mild form of bacteria surrounding your teeth. So if you brush well, you flush every day, you floss every day, you're not going to have that. So are there any other things that people can do to prevent this? I know you just mentioned, obviously, the basic oral care, but are there foods that are better for you or other things you can do just to prevent this? Well, we always say, you know, eat a lot of raw vegetables, carrots and apple, anything that can be chewy and kind of clean your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, going to the dentist is the most appropriate thing to do. And is there any like specific um, like mouthwashes, toothpaste, or just anything else that people should do? Or is it just, as you mentioned, just basic dental care and your checkups? It really doesn't matter the brand of your toothpaste or what kind of floss you use. Mm -hmm. okay. The really thing is to do it. Okay. You know, if you brush your teeth twice a day, if you floss your teeth every night, you go to your dentist, you know, every six months, you're not going to have that problem. Um, and are there any uh, other health problems that could lead to gingivitis? Like say you're taking care of your teeth, but are there, is there anything else that maybe is going on in the body that could lead to this? So gingivitis, you know, is the first step to have an infection in your mouth. Okay. And it's, there's a big correlation between gum disease and heart attack because okay. there's a lot of bacteria in your mouth and you're swallowing that bacteria that can go into your bloodstream and cause a heart attack. So it's very, very important and can be deadly if you don't take care. Wow, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Mori. We'll be back with more care experts after this brief message. Thanks to Care Credit, I can take care of my best friend. Thanks to Care Credit, I can smile again. Thanks to Care Credit, I can be confident. Thanks to Care Credit, I can prepare for veterinary care. I can take care of myself again. I can be myself again. I can plan for Cooper's care. I can take care of my pug family. I can. I can. I can. I can have peace of mind. Welcome back to Care Experts. Let's continue our discussion on gum disease. Um, and how do dentists treat for gum disease and gingivitis? If it's mild, you know, a deep cleaning can take care of that. But if you neglect it so much uh -huh. that you have this deep pocketing that not even a regular cleaning can get to that, you need surgery. You need wow. a perio surgery where, you know, it's going to be more involved. It's going to be more painful. They have to kind of open your gum. They have to suture your gum. So you don't want to get to that stage. You want to take care of your teeth and your gums before it gets to that point. So are there are specific foods or lifestyle habits that one should avoid um, that might help prevent gum disease? Yes, there are many ways that you can prevent gum disease. You know, 
first, first of all, it's your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to bed snacking or eating like at midnight, a little candy here. That's the worst you can do for your teeth. Mm -hmm. You know, eating in bed after you brush your teeth and floss. Because okay. at night, you, you don't have a lot of saliva in your mouth. And the bacteria takes advantage of that. So I would say stay away from sugar, okay. anything candy, anything processed, um, drinks. A lot of drinks these days, they have a lot of sugar. They're energetic, but it have a lot of sugar. So you you should be taking care of your health, not only for your gums, yeah. but also, you know, your whole body. And what about like smoking, drinking? Are these all things that maybe other habits that can prevent just like bacteria in the mouth? Yes. I mean, smoking, when you smoke, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, grand negative bacteria in your mm -hmm. mouth and also drinking keeps your mouth dry. Okay. When your mouth is dry and you have a lot of saliva flowing, bacteria loves that environment so it sticks to your teeth you have more plaque so it's very important to balance everything in life and if there was um, maybe a patient that didn't have dental insurance are there other financing options that you would offer for this in our office we offer care credit mm -hmm. um, they can take advantage of you know taking care of their health mm -hmm. and having some time to pay off instead of you know worrying if they can afford or not now, Dr. Mori, is there a memory or a story, um, something that stood out to you in your career over the years that you'd like to share with us? There is one, uh, one woman that I helped. She was actually um, abused by her fiancé who kind of hit her in the face. Wow. And she fell and broke her tooth and she didn't have any money to restore her smile. And uh, a friend of a friend kind of uh, asked me if I could help her. And I restored her teeth. I did two veneers for her. And it really changed her life, you know, to have somebody help her so she could smile again and be, you know, out and about her life. And uh, so that was really wow. rewarding to me to be able to help someone in need and someone that, you know, suffer such an abuse. Yeah, that's such a heartwarming story to hear that you were able to help her. I'm sure yes. that she's always going to be remembering you every time she gets a compliment on her smile. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for sharing with us today. And I know we all feel more confident. We know so much more from talking to you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. All of our featured care experts accept and recommend the Care Credit credit card, which is accepted at hundreds of thousands of provider locations nationwide. For more information, visit carecredit.com.